Okay, some of you might have caught wind of a major scandal on book Twitter that I broke. And it's so heinous that I thought I should make a video explaining everything that happened and getting all the facts together in one place. The gist is that a white author debuting in 2024 has been caught using fake Goodreads accounts to one-star bomb other debuts who are mostly POC. There are 31 pages of receipts in a Google Doc. They go way back to April of this year. The accounts expended what must have been a ton of effort to make themselves look legit by rating dozens of books, but what gave away the game was that they would always rate one particular book, Crown Starlight by Kate Corrine, on a bunch of different lists. I had known about this for a while, but I held my tongue because the victims wanted me to. They wanted to try and resolve it privately at first, and this did not work out. They were told to let it go. I was not gonna let it go. Especially when the morning after Kate was finally alerted that people were catching on to these accounts, they went on Twitter to paint themselves as one of the to further promote their book. Straw that broke me. The night of December 5th, I tweeted about the situation while not naming any names because I still wanted to give whoever did it one final chance to make amends in private or figure out who did it if it was truly not them. Well, my tweets blew up on book Twitter and suddenly everybody was trying to figure out who I was talking about. I've heard of group chats reviving out of the void just to go through like lists of debuts one by one to rule them out. I swear y'all are so... <laughs> I was then contacted by an associate of Kate's who told me the accounts were actually made by a friend of Kate's from the Raylo fandom who thought they were helping Kate out. And I was given screenshots of a conversation of Kate discovering this. I do not believe this explanation. I do not believe this was a real conversation. I found it so stilted and there was a sudden villain twist at the end on the friend's part. And I didn't notice this until later, but... The timestamps jump from yesterday to today in the same screenshot. Like, what is this quantum dynamic time travel conversation? But in a moment, I asked for screenshots of more conversations between Kate and this friend that must go back to at least April, and I would not end up receiving any further evidence. While I was waiting, by the next day, Kate's name was floating around in all the author whisper networks. Finally, in the private Slack server for 2024 debuts, Kate confessed to being the subject of my tweets, but continued with the friend explanation and showed the same screenshots to the entire group. The group did not buy it. They demanded the same thing I did, more screenshots of conversations that go back further than this. Kate could not produce any, even though it had been over six hours since I first asked for them. I don't think they're very good with Photoshop. Anyway, the other debuts asked for this person's Discord. Deleted. Twitter. Deleted. Any proof that they exist. None. Then Kate left the chat saying, oh, it's clear that you guys are not going to believe me, like, no matter what I say, so bye. After that, a friend of Kate who happens to have albinism accused one of the victims, a black disabled woman, of deliberately targeting her with the saying, albino snake in a hen house, in a tweet she made venting about the situation. Except this tweet was posted three hours before anybody knew that this person was Kate's best friend. Now, I'm not in a position to debate whether this was ableist because it's a popular black southern saying. But this was clearly just an accusation to deflect from the main scandal. And I snapped and tweeted out the 31 pages of evidence. It was like I dropped a nuke on book Twitter. It blew up. Hundreds of people were accessing the documents at the same time, reacting live to these screenshots after screenshots of these fake accounts, like one star bombing, like fellow debuts, other Greek myth romances, and just like really popular books in general. The level of jealousy, I swear. Screenshots of Kate's conversation with her friend were also publicized, and that's when the Raylos entered the courtroom and took to the witness stand. They were like, we have cross-referenced our group chats and we do not know of any Lily among us. Furthermore, textual analysis of this conversation, using Kate's old fanfiction as a reference, points to this being written by the same person. What's worse is that the two biggest Raylo writers, who became actual published authors, Ali Hazelwood and Taya Guanzong, were among the books that got bombed. Taya especially had been friends with Kate for years. They've met in real life. Taya gave Kate's book a really heartfelt endorsement. And Kate proceeded to rate Taya's book, The Hurricane Wars, two stars with all the fake accounts. Kate also did something similar to me, like asking me for a blurb while rating my book three stars on the accounts, but it's, it's three stars, it's like whatever, it's not nearly as bad as what happened to everyone else. The main victims of this are The Poisons We Drink by Bethany Baptiste, So Let Them Burn by Camila Cole, To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods by Molly X. Chung, Voyage of the Dam by Francis White, and Mistress of Lies by K.M. Unright. These are all upcoming books, so please support them and their authors after everything they've been through. 
And also another author really unfairly targeted is R.M. Virtues. He is a black indie author and Kate once starred his Gods of Hunger series, probably because they're also Greek myth fantasy romances. Please check his books out. The first one, Drag Me Up, is a black queer reimagining of Hades and Persephone, featuring Hades as a black casino owner and Persephone as a trans black aerial dancer. It sounds pretty cool, so like, go check it out. I honestly do not know why Kate made the effort to do all of this while they had a like traditional publishing deal. It, it was super hyped. It is the main pick for Illumicrate next year. It was getting really great reviews from advanced readers. So it's like, what? what? You ever seen someone destroy their own life? Jealousy is a disease, y'all. And if you need to hear another piece of proof that Kate was the one who did this, one of the accounts, CC, can be confirmed to be Kate's by the friends list, and it upvoted Crown of Starlight on the same 37 obscure lists as the other fake accounts. The lists. It was always the lists. So much effort put into this, and their obsession with those 37 obscure lists was what brought them down in the end. So... Kate confessed to everything. It's honestly worse than if they had just not said anything. Because let's see, since June 2020, I've been fighting a losing battle against depression, alcoholism, and substance abuse. The full scope of which I've hidden from everyone in my life out of shame and a misguided belief that with the right medicine or enough therapy, I could beat it. You know, that's fine. That takes a lot to admit. But in the next paragraph, the lies start yet again. In late November 2023, I started a new medication, and on December 2nd, 2023, I suffered a complete psychological breakdown. During this time, I created roughly six profiles on Goodreads. First of all, the review bombing started all the way back in April. We have the receipts that prove this. Note the dates on this, and how the pictures for Kate's book and To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods were still unofficial art at this point. And then, along with two profiles I made during a similar but shorter breakdown in 2020, I boosted the rating of my book, bombed the ratings of several fellow debut authors, and left reviews that ranged from kind of mean to downright abusive. Okay, so you've had burners since 2022? What did you use them for? What other victims are you not acknowledging? Also, reviews like, I can't believe Del Rey spent half a million dollars on this when they could have spent half a million dollars on anything else. Sorry, not sorry. This is on to Gaze Upon Wicked Gods by Molly X. Chung, which is coming out from the same editor and publisher as Kate's book. So, could have spent half a million dollars on anything. Do you mean you, Kate? Is this what the issue is? Are you mad that a Chinese woman got half a million dollars instead of you? Then... Two of those authors, Molly X. Chang and Danielle Jensen, are fellow Del Rey authors. Camila Cole and Bethany Baptiste just happened to be on the wrong Goodreads lists at the wrong time. I felt no ill will toward any of them. It was just my fear about how my book would be received running out of control. My memories of this are extremely fuzzy, so it's possible there are a couple other authors. If so, please know that I take full ownership of what I did to you as well. I'm sorrier than you'll ever know. There's nothing I can say to erase what I did to you. Two out of the six debut authors of color you review bomb just happened to be on the wrong lists at the wrong time? What list was this? Like 2024 POC debuts? Also, how is it taking full ownership to go, oh, it's possible there were other authors? Again, we have the receipts in the 31-page document. You can literally just go through it to see everybody who was affected. You're not sorry if you can't even face your own receipts. Let's keep going. Ugh. When I was slapped on the wrist by Goodreads and vague tweeted by a handful of people, they mean me. I panicked that my secret was about to get out, and rather than taking responsibility for my actions, I tried to cover my tracks. Still in the middle of this breakdown, I made up the world's sloppiest chat with a non-existent friend who was supposedly to blame, and sent fake apologies for the actions of said friend, which only made things worse. Okay, I'm glad that there's like some self-awareness about how bad this conversation was, but here's something I recently realized. The version of the screenshots Kate sent to the 2024 debut group cropped out a part compared to the version I received from a different source. This part at the end with a friend going, I just remembered something important. A lot of my bad reviews were from POC authors. When the call-out post eventually comes for you, they'll call you a racist too. You're welcome. So... Kate knew they were being racist, knew it well enough to realize that this acknowledgement is better off cropped out for wider dissemination. Yet there's no mention of racism in this entire apology. This is the rest of it. I betrayed the confidence of my agent, my pub team, my readers, and my friends, and betrayed my own deeply held values. I also dragged one of my dearest friends and fellow debut authors into the mud with me when she came to my defense. 
I'll leave her name out of this so as not to pull her in even deeper. However, if she wishes to come forwards, I'll apologize to her publicly as well. Let me be extremely clear. While I might not have been sober or of sound mind during this time, I accept responsibility for the pain and suffering I caused, and my delay in posting this is due to spending the last few days offline while going through withdrawal as I sobered up enough to be brutally honest with you and myself. I know some of you won't forgive me and I recognize that you're not required to. No one ever wants to be judged by their worst actions, but that's not always up to us. I'll be reaching out to everyone directly impacted, though that may take time, since I'm checking into an intensive psychiatric care and rehab facility, which means I'll be mostly off social media as I need to give 100% to the program if I want it to stick. All I can do going forwards is to try to live my life in a way that shows you these aren't empty words. Yours with so much love and the utmost heartbreak, Kate Corain. Kate, why is your heart broken when it's you who betrayed the enthusiasm and support of the people cheering you on? I know a bookseller who worked so hard to promote your book with no compensation to themselves, and now they're feeling refund requests for all the pre-orders that they generated with their passion. You betray the artist who poured hundreds of hours into painting your covers and designing the fancy Illumicrate edition that will now never see the light of day. You betrayed a years-long friend who endorsed your book. Mental health medication does not make anyone racist, nor does it give you the power to time travel back to April. This isn't accountability. It's an attempt to elicit sympathy. And I am sympathetic toward mental health struggles. We've all been there. Please, no one go out of their way to harass Kate Corain some more. They have paid the price already. They need to get the help they need. But mental health and medication cannot be accepted as an excuse for racist behavior. Plenty of us are also mentally ill, and we're not making fake Goodreads accounts review bombing our peers. That takes so much effort. My medication barely really gives me the energy to pummel racists. What is there to be learned from this? Well, first of all, don't do this. But if, if you were somehow caught in a situation like this, as the perpetrator, take the chance given to you by the victims to resolve this privately, instead of doubling down and manipulating your friends to attack the victims. Kate would 100% still have their book deal and their career if they only apologized and promised to not do this again as the victims first wanted. Instead, well, next thing you know, you're on the New York Times, you're on NBC, you're on Washington Post, you're on Business Insider, you're on Time Magazine, uh, you're on Forbes. This is not the reason you want to get on Forbes for. This could have been avoided so many steps along the way. This is like a masterclass in how not to handle a PR crisis. Guess what, everyone? Kate Corain is back with an exclusive interview with the Daily Beast to insist that they are not racist, and that it was their ADHD meds and autism that caused them to have a psychotic break with reality that led to the review bombing. Honestly, I didn't even want to address this, but there's so much harmful rhetoric in the article that I have to talk about it. To start off, let me clarify that I fully believe that Kate struggles with her mental health, and I emphasize with how overwhelmed they must have felt at navigating the publishing industry as a debut author with ADHD and autism. They are obviously not in a good place, and I sincerely hope that they find the help they need. My issue is that Kate keeps saying that they're not using their mental health as an excuse for what they did, except that's exactly what they're doing by insisting that it was the medication that caused them to behave in the way they did instead of subconscious racial biases. Their exact words, I want to just be extraordinarily clear that race had absolutely nothing to do with the authors that I chose to go after. The fact that there were a large number of people of color among the authors that I targeted is an unfortunate coincidence that happened because I was going off of Goodreads lists. That was the only driver and I am so distressed and heartbroken by the fact that the impression that people have of me now is that I am a racist. It's just, if you are actually committed to being anti-racist, this is the sort of thing that you would not say. Racist isn't a binary state where you either are or you're not. We are all capable of racist actions because we were all born and raised in a world built on racism. If you are unwilling to recognize this, then you probably do perpetuate racism on a regular basis because you are clearly not willing to do the work to combat it within yourself. Racism isn't necessarily intentional, it's not necessarily conscious. You may not look at someone and go, oh, I hate her because she's Chinese, but you could be looking at how she received a half a million dollar deal from your same publisher and automatically feel that she doesn't deserve it even though you've never even read her book. And then you fail to unpack why exactly you feel she doesn't deserve it, and instead you go on Goodreads and make um, an account with a fake Asian name to one-star her book.
I feel like too many people have the impression that racism is like yelling slurs or going around constantly just seething at the existence of certain peoples, but it's it doesn't necessarily look that blatant. It can look a lot more insidious. Also, to be like, oh, this is so harmful in retrospect to my friends of color who are now left thinking that this whole time I was harboring this deep, dark hatred for them. Like, okay, how was Taeya Guanzhong supposed to feel? After you've been friends with the years, you've literally met in real life, she gave your book a glowing endorsement, and that whole time, you were behind her back rating her book two stars with all your fake accounts. To blame it all on mental health, medication is so dangerous because medication is already so stigmatized. Like, imagine someone needing genuine help, but then they see this and get dissuaded by the notion that it could make you go on a racist rampage on Goodreads for months. Plenty of us take the same medication for the same sorts of conditions, and we don't ever think to sabotage our peers. And why is Matthew Perry getting dragged into this? The, the disrespect. It is so insincere and ignorant to go, oh, I'm not racist, the drugs made me act out of character. Like, if you are more concerned at being called racist than racism itself, that is an active hindrance to dismantling racism. I recently had an experience where I explained in detail to someone, a white person, exactly why I felt they were failing me, a person of color. And their response to it was, oh, I feel like you're gaslighting me by making it about race. Now, I know this person did not do any of it out of a conscious malice. They were not looking at me like, oh, I, I'm not going to take you seriously because you are Chinese. But the fact is that they refused to defend me against a fellow white person who was attacking me, and therefore they reinforced a power structure where white people can get away with so much while people of color are constantly expected to take the high road. This is what caused the Kate situation to blow up so big in the first place, actually. I've said many times this could have been solved privately. Instead, it was not taken seriously as a concern, thus forcing me to go public to protect my friends who are among the victims from further attacks. Kate literally would have been allowed to keep going if I hadn't said anything, despite the relevant parties being handed all of the evidence in private. Like, I don't want to be the drama person, it is extremely emotionally taxing. But when the system that we're supposed to rely on refuses to solve the problem, then making a fuss in public is the only way to go. Kate had been review bombing since April last year. Despite what this article says about them making the first account after getting on new ADHD meds in June and writing negative reviews against her will, like, what makes more sense. A debut author seeing a fellow debut author announcing a splashy six-figure book deal and then getting so jealous that they use one of their fake accounts to one-star the book, or that ADHD medication made them lose all grip on reality and drove them to give the one star against their will. What makes more sense here? And then what is this about regretting it the next morning but then being unable to delete it or change it because it would mean confronting the truth about not having autonomy over her actions? Kate had months to delete the fake ratings and reviews. They chose not to. They were not sorry until they were caught. If they are truly as committed to being not racist as they say, they would have realized the harm in disproportionately targeting authors of color. It's not enough for someone to be like, oh, I don't hate any race. What are you talking about? You have to recognize when you are reinforcing unequal racial dynamics. A proper apology for this would have involved admitting to racial biases, however unconscious, and a failure to be cognizant of the need to not make the lives of authors of color harder in an industry that already gives us less support and fewer opportunities. If any of you think that publishers actually favor authors of color just because they push out a few of us to success each year, you also need to do some unpacking. If you think we're asking too much of Kate in a, oh, they already apologized, what do you want them to do kind of way, know that you are calling someone who has thus far refused to admit the true harm they've done and is in fact lying about all their victims blocking them so, oh, they can't reach out when you know, every author has their agent's email in their contact page. And so far, Kate has never even bothered to name all their victims and promote their books, even though we all have access to the receipts that show the list of them. The sincere effort is not there. What is there is a really bad attempt to mend their public image because they can't stand being known as a racist. Literally more worried about that than racism itself. Every single person who I've seen make a video about this has done a better job highlighting the victims than Kate. Two of the books, Voyage of the Damned by Francis White and So Let Them Burn by Camila Cole, have actually come out since the initial, you know, wave of this. And I highly recommend you go check them out. And please also look forward to The Poisons We Drink by Bethany Baptiste, To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods by Molly X. Chung, Mistress of Lies by K.M. Unright, and The Empire Wars by Akana Phoenix, who was not in the receipts because she had been review bombed so badly that she actually contacted Goodreads to remove her book, so it was physically not there. 
when the receipts were taken. She had to completely start over on Goodreads after this came out, so please go support her. The Empire Wars by Akana Phoenix.